How is Vanilla for all the Flodcraft still winning? Do we still play Vanilla World of Warcraft? When making content about Classic World of Warcraft, you quickly learn that people can't help but compare the classic game to the retail version of modern times. Natural. In my experience, this behavior only increases in frequency and the intensity of the reaction when there is either new content released for either version of the game or more often yeah. when one version of the game is perceived to be failing. This can be difficult. There can only be one winner. Anyone who says a participation trophy is a good thing or matters is a loser. Winning is key and winning is everything and they can only be one winner to manage here on YouTube. When is it not? After all, whilst I pull no punches when it comes to sharing my strong personal preference for the earlier versions of WoW, I have okay. no intention of what ruining- do you what do you, Why don't you have nameplates? What are you doing without nameplates? What the fuck is this? You got- I swear to fucking god. Why the fuck do people not play with nameplates? Like, jeez. Nameplates, I'm pretty sure nameplates are the thing that shows the health bar under mobs and yes you you need that you 100 percent without question need that how do you play the game without it that's so true hey. anyway in other people's fun or shitting on the retail game is a cheap way to grow my channel my personal issues with modern wow are just that personal and whilst i stand by my belief that the game has moved in the wrong developmental direction over the years i don't resent other players for enjoying it I would like to one day return to retail and check it out. In I don't hate retail either. Like I don't like I don't like the direction the game's gone in, but like I don't I don't actively hate it. I just wish that it was different. This is such an underestimated point because people get this confused constantly, okay? People think that disagreeing with the direction that the game is taking and not playing it because of it equals you hate the game or you hating the game equals these things it doesn't it, it doesn't you can you can easily not play the game and dislike the direction it is going in but still not hate the game it is pretty simple but people always think oh oh if you don't like anything about this game that means you hate it stop that is that is such a Low IQ take to say it's uh, to, to say it nicely. Stop. Short. The last thing I want to do is foster an antagonistic environment through my videos towards modern World of Warcraft. With that you being should. said, I think yeah. that the yeah, constant you should, comparison probably. of retail and classic is an inevitable consequence of having multiple versions of World of Warcraft available to players, especially considering you can play them all with just one subscription. People are always going to compare their options in these circumstances. And even though, as I've just stated, you can play any available version of WoW, be it Vanilla Era Classic, Hardcore, Wrath Classic, or Retail with just one subscription, most people don't have the time, interest, or the energy to divide their gaming experience like that. Real life- Well, yeah, I mean, like, you can't play, like, Hardcore WoW, or, like, you can't play Classic WoW seriously and probably also play Retail, unless you have, like, a lot of free time. Yeah, probably. That's true. Responsibilities. You could probably do a uh, manage it, but you know that would just mean that you're raid logging. Probably it's possible, but you know whatever. Commitments and other leisure interests get in the way of that, and the need to therefore prioritize to choose one version of the game mm -hmm. over the rest leads to. Also, by the way, we have already seen the World of Warcraft situation in life play out. And people are gonna get tired of even comparing the games. It's gonna be like, oh, you play classic, oh, I can't play retail. Who, who, who cares? It's gonna get to that point. Because think about it. how many of you are absolutely just tired of American politics. It was fun at the start when you know, oh, this guy could be corrupt and this guy could be corrupt. But now there's so much. Uh, how many people are left caring? Not a lot. It's it's far too much. And when it, when, the, when it becomes far too much, even in the ways that you want, people lose interest because it's just too exhausting to follow. And the same way that American politics have gotten boring and no one wants to talk about them anymore, the debate about which world of Warcraft is the best is also gonna just fade into the ether. The people picking sides very quickly. Given that my channel has largely become a classic WoW channel, for now at least, I see this debate all the time, 
typically through the lens mm. of people like myself who prefer classic, by which I mean vanilla era WoW, yeah. over what came after. Okay. And before I get into the heart of this video, I want to make it clear that I understand that. I understand that my audience is primarily made up of people who prefer classic, especially vanilla WoW with it. I think, yeah, most people do. Like, I've looked at videos about, like, uh, retail WoW, and, like, viewership for retail WoW videos are so low. It's old Lucius Malfoy looking high elf models <laughs> and one mechanic yeah. boss fights. Yeah, they could fix it. So I appreciate that. that a lot of the feedback in this retail do classic, classic plus. debate that no I've seen changes. in the last few months is weighted heavily in favor of classic on my channel. But still, I think it's interesting that this debate is even bro, happening. Bro, bro, I just want to mention how bad classic players are. Like, look at this pull. This guy attacks the wrong target, splits the DPS, is a fucking rogue, doesn't re uh, run to the tank. The tank literally could not care less that his rogue is getting f <laughs> This video is the perfect perfect analogy for classic and uh, and what's happening in it my channel but still i think it's interesting that this debate is even happening in the first i wonder why he ended that clip <laughs> he probably has been i wonder why that check. happened place i mean is it not amazing that people to this day argue that a nearly 20 year old version of a game that hasn't seen any new content released since 2006, and which has been officially playable again for four years, is a better game than the modern version which has had all that time to refine, innovate, and improve? I think so anyway. And I think it's- I think that there's some, like in some ways- Bro, they didn't refine or innovate shit. It's the texture of something being rougher makes it more enjoyable. Like for example, I do think that Dark Souls 3 is a better game than Dark Souls 1 in a lot of ways, but I enjoy Dark Souls 1 more. I just do. I enjoyed mm. PUBG more than Warzone, even though Warzone is a better game than PUBG in every single way. I just enjoyed PUBG more. It's worth asking ourselves why- Eh, I don't know how that lines into a graphics debate, but you know, whatever. This is. Why is it that people prefer old school WoW over what we have today? And I've been asking myself that question a lot lately as I've leveled my rogue through old Azeroth and interacted with so many other players. And I wanted to make a video about it in the hope that we can perhaps figure out what makes vanilla so appealing to us and possibly apply that to the future of the game. All right, let's Plus, see what he thinks. I really enjoy talking about the themes and mechanics which work together to make old Azeroth such an immersive and enjoyable place to be. So if that's your thing, watch on. All I right. think if you were to ask a hundred classic players why they prefer their version of WoW over retail, you'd likely it's get- because they suck at the game. That's why, obviously, right? That's clearly why. They're just old, bad boomers that can't handle, uh, you know, a spell with more than a five-second reaction time. Yeah, they're just old men that can't keep up. Does retail actually not- is- is retail actually not the same? Again, never raided there, but I'm assuming it's pretty easy considering you have an add-on that literally tells you MOVE LEFT TWO PACES! Oh boy. A hundred unique answers. But the central theme would remain consistent, and it's why I prefer Classic 2. I think I can summarize it in one word, in fact. Adventure. Let me- I would summarize it in- more naked Sylvana. Explain. Okay, yeah, You see, I, like I think that. that this all comes down yeah. to the developmental direction that Blizzard took WoW in after Vanilla, compared to what inspired its original development. Vanilla WoW is at its core an online adventure role-playing game. Yeah. The focus is on okay. making your own specific character based on the aesthetic and thematic preferences you have in fantasy games. And I've always felt like I didn't like how in Wrath of the Lich King they started this, how the character's narrative is decided for them. Now, Final Fantasy does this, and it's great. And I can respect it and appreciate it for what it is. This is a streamline line argument, okay? Everything got streamlined in World of Warcraft uh, retail, pretty much. Because think about it. Previously, if you were a rogue... It felt unique, even though there were literally 200 trillion uh, the exact same looking rogues as you, but you know they were rogues, you know? Y you know there was some, some some kind of understanding there. But then, for example, in retail, 
Every cla- every, every race can be any class that you want. There's no problem with any of this. Uh, Torin Paladin? Of course. Gnome Paladin? Why not? I don't know if gnomes can be paladins, but you get the idea. It's so stupid. Everyone can be anything, and the feeling of uniqueness is just... The feeling of uniqueness is just so dried up in retail. And the worst part is, the feeling of uniqueness that they want to give you is... Champion! It's time to save Azeroth for the 15 trillion time this... this minute. Are you ready? And that's kind of... that's kind of lame. What, what did you do to deserve to become the champion? Nothing. Nothing. You start playing World of Warcraft and guess what? Some rando fucker, fucking guy just starts calling you champion and you suddenly need to save the world. That's star Starfield level of dialogue right there. However, I kind of prefer MMOs where the player creates their own narrative of where their character's coming from. And then being thrust out into a truly massive, vast world with an equal level of depth to explore on your own terms. Yeah. You feel like a drop of water in an ocean, not just yep. because of how big the world is, but also because of how many intricate systems there are for you to delve into and the presence of many of the players of all levels that you see out in the world. The focus is on creating- I think that's actually another really big reason. It's like another one of those, I think like accidental geniuses of classic WoW is that a lot of zones have reasons for old, or sorry, for higher level players to go back to them. Like for example, Do you have people that are gonna kill more Latim or they're gonna kill Morbent Fell in Duskwood. And you're gonna see regularly people that are like level 40 maybe right level 40 or level 35 in duskwood and it's like oh shit like i'm gonna get there one day and you go to westfall and you see like a level 60 riding through westfall because they're gonna get the buff from zg uh and, and like you're always seeing those players that you can aspire alliance pathetic to be like and i think for new players that's actually a really cool feeling because it gives the game a a scope and like a depth to it that a lot of MMOs don't have. An adventure right from the start and doing it your own way. Or they way. have it in like an artificial way. Simply, World of Warcraft has never been a sandbox game, but no, the magic it's not. of vanilla is its ability to appear like a sandbox game, whilst providing a satisfying, clear path of progression for your character. Now, some people will already be saying that these are just words, that I'm just regurgitating the same praise for classic that you've heard from a hundred different people for years now. And that in reality, Vanilla WoW is a dated game packed full of inconvenient mechanics and gameplay elements. And to an extent- They're right. Yeah. 100%. It is. They're right. It's completely inconvenient. There's a lot of really annoying things to it, and there's a lot of really stupid stuff. But like, the mastery over those stupid things and the reward for getting the mastery over it is very high. And I think all- No, nah, it's actually nothing. It's just, it's just tedious. So Vanilla WoW is an easy game. It's an easy game that rewards knowledge and preparation much more than individual player dexterity or reaction time. And because of that, it has a different audience of people that want to play it. Because a lot of people maybe don't want to play a game that's like super high reaction, super fast paced. Like, you know, you've got to be like reacting every second, like Counter-Strike. You know, they want to play a more laid back game where they can just like learn and gain knowledge and that knowledge is power in the game. It's like D&D, yeah, something like that. So, yeah, I think that- I'm not really sure what kind of not magical knowledge he's talking about here, by the way kind of stuff is amazing yeah they want to smoke while i play yeah exactly there it is i want to smoke while i play it's literally that simple it's not people that are like they're it's not that they're bad at video games like a lot of these people are probably good at video games but they don't want to have to be good at video games for eight hours a day they just want to play a game and chill extent i actually agree with that vanilla is full of inconveniences but I personally think that's partly what makes it so good, especially in comparison to the increasingly streamlined, stripped down Man, game which came later. I mean, think about it. Getting your first mount at level 40 only feels I, that so was my great mount. because you've spent the last 39 levels running around a massive world at a snail's pace. 
getting your hands on a sweet well, weapon. And it's also like that mounts were. I mean, getting a mount on level 40 was shit. It just was. It, 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 it is. Get, getting a mount finally is just such a load off your back because now you can feel less bad. You're still feeling bad because it's not a 100% mount. But that was just bad game design. And considering you were stuck walking... Uh, okay, <clears throat> let me explain basic human uh, psychology here. If you commit to something... And getting getting level 20 is honestly already a commitment in World of Warcraft cla Classic. Get, getting a level 10 is a commitment, right? If you commit to something, everything that seems bad seems just a hurdle to overcome. And every kind of small insignificant reward that you get seems like the biggest thing ever. Because you have committed, you see these things as great achievements, milestones, and rewards. For anyone who has not committed to World of Warcraft Classic, they see it for what it is. Shit game design. Or really expensive. So, like, being able to afford a mount was a really big deal. I don't understand how idiots can't afford to buy a mount on level 40. I, without doing any anything in the auction house, can afford the mount at level 40. How, uh, how can people fail this? I buy all my skills, don't care. Still got a mount at level 40. How do you fail at that? Like, just, like, for example, like, I remember, like, getting your first mount was, like huge and i remember for me i hit level 40 i said fuck the mount i'm not gonna buy the mount i'm gonna spend all of my gold on plate armor yeah it might take me longer to get there but God, fucking god damn it whenever i get there i'm gonna kill everything huh and i just walked around but i had full plate armor at like level 41 in vanilla wow halfway through your leveling experience like the whirlwind axe or vanquish's sword Scoop only feels great the right because of target. how inconveniently long the time is that it takes for you to level and your need to constantly increase your power to match the tanky hard-hitting mobs you're pitted against along the way yeah Com vanilla while leveling is very hard and it's not like it's not hard like skill based hard it's just hard numerically you take True. a lot of damage the mobs do a lot of damage you don't have tools to solve Incorrect. This is actually the easiest part of World of Warcraft Classic. I'm gonna share a secret. Just fucking use Spirit Gear. No, seriously, use Spirit Gear. Yeah, you're not gonna prob- you should probably not try to take two mobs at the same time, but your downtime- downtime between- uh, between uh, pulls is gonna become three times shorter. Because Spirit Gear is just so broken while leveling. If you see if you see a piece of gear and it has fi five five uh, five strength five stam or something like that and the alternative is five and five spirit choose spirit you're gonna level so much faster it's ridiculous you don't need to spend e even one third of the time healing because spirit is so broken solve every problem the mobs give you. And because of that, getting upgrades, and it also is really long. And because it's so long and hard, it feels better to beat it. And it feels better to get through it. Completing a labyrinthine dungeon like Marauder, Sunken Temple, or BRD it does. only feels like such a grand achievement because of the time and effort you need to spend putting a group together, getting to the instance, and then working your way to a huge expanse packed full of mobs, not designed for speed and efficiency, yep. but rather for immersion, exploration, and to fit into the overall world the game that's, brings to life. Dude, that's exactly what I was saying earlier about dungeons in Classic WoW. Dungeons in Classic WoW are the best dungeons Blizzard have, have ever made. True. Like, maybe I'm the only person that feels this way, but I don't get excited for new dungeons in WoW anymore because I know what they're going to be. Seven trash packs a boss, and then five trash packs and a boss. And oh, uh, I... I st I, I'm still gonna keep with my, my opinion that uh, retail it, it just just has gone completely the wrong way artistically. Look at this. It's clean, easy to understand, and pleasant to the eyes. If re if they would redesign this uh, this room in retail, it would have 15 trillion things in it. 
it, and it would look cluttered, it would look painful, it would make no sense. And then five trash packs, maybe a mini boss, and then a boss. Like, they're so formulaic because every single also, dungeon is... Also, by the way, by the way, by the way, how should we do this? Should we do it like this so you can see the chat for the extra added value? Or should it be down? For Mythic Plus. Leave it in the comments so I know. It's so boring. In short, like any great adventure, Vanilla constantly throws inconvenient problems your way. BRD and is the best figure out your own made. solutions, and it does so in a way which feels consistent and authentic BRD to an sucks. actual virtual world. Mm -hmm. There is no cutting corners here, no skipping the queue. When you play the game, yeah. you are logging your character into what was designed first and foremost as a world, not a series of game modes tied loosely together in an open. Pitch, please. The, the classic devs had no idea what the hell they're designing. Yeah, you're going from menu to menu in order to, uh, you know, play the game and level your character up. There's no menu-based gameplay in vanilla. I think that's a huge thing. And also, like, I'm not sure if he's going to cover this. I think another big deal about Vanilla WoW is that your progress, like, stays the same. There's not, like, a seasonal battle pass that oh, well, I'm level 43, and if I don't get level 45 soon, then uh, there's going to be, like, a leveling change, and everybody's going to get automatically leveled up to 45 or automatically leveled mm. down to, like, zero. Like, in the same way that other games have, like, these catch-up mechanisms all the time. Okay, okay, okay. Now I understand what he means. So, his point is close to mine. Let me rephrase this in human language so everyone can understand. One of the worst things about uh, retail, when I played it, was the fact that you can't take it slow. You can't take it slow. Because you don't need to wait for an expansion to completely invalidate everything you have done in the game. You, you just need to wait uh, two months or three months or however it is long for some kind of big patch to happen. And everything you have done is going to be devalidated. So, you get max level, you start doing things, you start doing dungeons, that's fine. Then you slowly start to do um, raids, and you know, you acquire a little bit of gear. Then, because you're not a super active player, you don't have all the gear, right? And then some kind of mi mi mid-expansion patch comes out, and s something like that, and guess what? A new zone uh, pops up, and guess what's in that zone? Catch-up mechanics, aka some kind of stupid quiz to take five minutes. And what do you get? Better gear than from the raids that you previously got. Did. And it completely devalidate, devalidates everything you do in the game. Because it, it, wh why would you raid if you know you're not going to raid uh, so hardcore that you're going to get all the gear? And, and then it's going to feel like it's going to be a week and you, you, everything you have done is devalidated again because of a catch-up mechanic. It's stupid. Environment ...like a glorified lobby game. This is what MMOs were yeah, originally is a lobby designed game. to be. Virtual worlds for players to quest and explore in. Mm -hmm. Where the systems encouraged player interactions, socialization, and your own agency. Where your desire to run a dungeon... Or this is, uh... Um... So I know I, I know what this is, but I don't remember what game this is. This is a dragon that has death touch on every attack. The devs thought that it's that they're gonna just add it and every attack kills and no one's gonna be able to kill it. Well, what did these players do? Well, they they brought like a hundred priests to the fight. And all they did was auto attack it, and as soon as someone died, they just trezzed it. AK, the dragon couldn't attack fast enough, so the rising stops. And then they just clobbered it slowly down. But the developers, the developers, saw, uh, saw this, this happening, decided, wait a minute, we're gonna remove this because this is supposed to be a boss that no one can ever uh, kill. And then everyone got pissed. Complete a quest, or team up with another player, wasn't based solely on whether it would result in a cost-effective, measurable increase in your character's power level relative to the time expenditure. This approach to design wasn't just limited to MMORPGs either, but is instead indicative of an older approach to game design overall. For example, if you were to look at another of my favourite games, Morrowind, released a couple of years before WoW, you can see the same approach. 
I never fast played travel Wall systems, Wall which have become standard in the okay. Elder Scrolls games, are heavily limited. Character progression runs at a much slower pace, and there is no ever-present compass guiding you to your next objective. Adventure. That's what it was all about back then. And no, no, not just because we were kids, or because the internet was so much younger and less saturated with every manner of guide and forum post directing you to play... Throw, I don't understand these people who complain about guides. Bruh, you have the ability to just not look at a guide. You have that ability. You, there, there's nothing forcing you to click on it or use it. ...the game the correct way. Instead, vanilla WoW and games like it feel refreshing and immersive for players now. I think that a big factor actually was the fact that we didn't have the resources that we did, that we do now. And like... There was something magical about things in games back then because you didn't have as many resources to understand what the context was behind them. Whereas now, obviously, you can just look up how to get corrupted Ashbringer and, you know, you can look up... Do you actually... Can you fish uh, in between Eastern and, and Western Plaguelands and get Ashbringer? No? Okay, all right, I thought so. And you just automatically know. But, like, obviously now it's not the same... But I don't think that's, like, the whole story. Amazing. Ow. Because of design choices that still hold up 20 years But it is a factor. Later. So that's vanilla, and why I think it remains the preferred version of World of Warcraft for a good bunch of players. But what about retail? What makes it so different from the WoW of yesterday? And why did the retail game start to decline? Well, here, you can look, you can literally see why retail is different. Nobody plays retail WoW. Is he gonna play? Is he gonna log on to retail WoW? Um, Doesn't it looks look like, like it. he's. Yeah, he is. By the way, one of the ways. Now, this is pure speculation. But one of the ways I think that you yourself ruined retail WoW was Miss Pandari, okay? Because everyone said, oh, Pandas, nah, ba nah, man, I'm, I'm out. This game's for kids now. And. Well, then a lot of people left and Blizzard saw, saw the numbers. And now World of Warcraft wasn't about different interesting new experiences. It, it became all about champion, save Azeroth again. Now, for the 15 billionth time. You know, I, th I think that's where the, uh, when, uh, when the switch slowly happened. Because they, they, you, you made it very clear. That, that it needs to be hardcore, like, you know, Shrek fighting the kingdom type of thing all the time, constantly. There's no layers like an onion. It, 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 it's just donkey fucking a dragon. Um, and I'm pretty sure he might have add-ons whenever he does that. Um, actually, maybe not, because he just changes UI. But in general, like... You just, there's so many barriers to entry with Retail WoW, it's no surprise that people don't want to play it. At least in terms of player count, after the end of the classic trilogy. Well, to me, it comes back to that earlier point about inconvenience. Mm -hmm. You see, I made a case for why the inconveniences of vanilla are actually part of what makes the game great, at least most of the time. But sometimes, they're not. Sometimes... Well, it's just, it's also that the inconveniences of the game... Bro has 11 FPS, by the way are the difficulty rather than the game itself like for example the raids in classic are really easy yep but getting into the the hardest thing about getting about doing next ramas is zoning 40 people into next ramas and if you can do that American you can probably problems. clear the raid inconvenience is just a yeah, pain it's effort and, and preparation which you yeah. can tolerate it in your leisure activities will obviously vary from person to person Sometimes having to travel all the way from Stormwind to Desolus or from mm -hmm. Orgrimmar to Blackrock Mountain is just a pain in the ass, especially if you get ganked on the boat from Booty Bay. <laughs> Vanilla requires a certain Alliance. tolerance, dare I say it, even an appreciation for pain that some people quite understandably don't share. And unlike today, where we have the ability to compare Vanilla to the modern game and assess their differences with the benefit of hindsight, Back when it was current content and Blizzard was eagerly trying no, to No, bro, seriously, has 11 FPS, players. what the hell? These issues were seen less as an essential component of creating an immersive virtual fantasy world 
and more is flaws, which ideally... This is one of the reasons why um, I think Wrath of the Lich King wasn't as good as people think it is. I think Wrath of the Lich King had peak class design, but in terms True. of the way the game played, I think it was much more uh, shitty, basically. Like, Wrath of the Lich King fixed a lot of the problems that made the game good. And Wrath of the Lich King was whenever Blizzard started catering the game to people that didn't want to play it. I mean, that's a fine opinion, but you should probably actually tell us why. What what did they change? Because I can't act, um, <clears throat> I can't imagine anything that they changed in the Wrath of Lich King that, you know, changes these dynamics, you know? I, I need examples here. I can't think of anything. Maybe it's the fact that you got the cold weather flying while leveling because you just got enough gold for it by default now? I don't know. What what changed, really? Burning Crusade was still World of Warcraft for World of Warcraft MMO players. Wrath of the Lich King is whenever they started trying to make the game more mainstream. And I think they took out the texture of the game that made it mean more and made it feel better. Wrath is too homogenized? I don't know about... I mean, I, I don't know. I think it... I feel like classes feel complete in yeah, Wrath of the Lich King. True. They That's do. That's so true. But... The, the class is only one part of the game. ...should be ironed out as WoW progressed through its expansions. And that's what happened from as early as the Burning Crusade. Mm -hmm. I remember watching Preach's Legacy of TBC video back in the I've, day. Dude, I've watched that video, I'm not even kidding, like six times. It's so good. ...and hearing him justifiably celebrate the practical advantages of quest hubs, which became yeah. commonplace in Outland compared to the disparate scattered nature of questing in vanilla which would often see you jump from zone to zone completing a quest or two at a time before hitting a temporary barrier and needing to move on yeah if you look at a vanilla dungeon like mm. zulfarak and realize how scattered the dungeon quests are and then compare it to say hellfire ramparts in the burning crusade where the quests are close by you can understand why this was considered a big improvement in terms it was a big improvement and I, I think that, like, again, with Burning Crusade... True, it was technically a big improvement, but there is a downside to this. This makes the world more cluttered because all the quests are in, the, in your vicinity, right? So, you spend a lot of time looking at the same stuff. If, in Classic, if something made you go to another zone, you're changing scenery, that, that changes pace, that feels good, you know, you're a little bit more relaxed and whatnot. But in Burning Crusade, well, you're spending time in the same zone, which means they need to clutter up the zones more with stuff, because they understood this, you know. Uh, in the Burning Crusade, you had... Seemingly expanses of X, but then you move in the uh, one direction for one minute, less than one minute, and suddenly, well, it's a completely different scenery. So the world felt smaller to a degree, at least in my eyes. Crusade. There are probably no dungeons in Burning Crusade that I think were like really good. I'm trying to think. Was there yes, any dungeon in Burning sucked. Crusade they that all I thought was good? Shattered wait, Halls, maybe. True. They all actually sucked. Wow. I didn't even think about it. No, um, I like the uh, Durnhold Keep. Yeah, I, I actually really like Durnhold Keep, where you go back in time. Yeah, Return to Hillsbrad. Yeah, that's actually not true. Yeah, I thought that one was incredible. Architraz? I didn't think Architraz was that great. The Shadow Labs sucked. At least. And TBC was just the start. Wrath of the Lich King was the expansion that really began the process of trying to solve the perceived Vrad had a lot of good dungeons. Yeah, Problems exactly. Of World of Warcraft. Yep. Rat well, a lot of good ones and a lot of really bad ones. Raph was it. Interacting with players to form dungeon groups is tedious and time-consuming. Raph was the beginning of the end. Add in LFD. Leveling is slow and annoying for most players. Add in heirlooms to speed it up. And mm -hmm. so... 61? I don't think you can get that shoulder pad at level 61. But I ...like a virtual world to explore and adventure in have become the objective ways to correctly play the game. And all of this can, of course, be accomplished from the comfort of your home city. Yeah, I'll tell you this. Mm, true. You, they should have never added level boosts into the game. And they should have never added the WoW token into the game. And they should have never added faction changes into the game.
All of these things made the game worse. You know what the funniest fucking thing of this retail thing is? Faction change make game worse underrated. The only person who's typing in trade are people selling carries. ...without the irritation of having to interact in any way with other players. I mean, why would you want to talk to people in a massively multiplayer game, right? Don't worry about it, you'll not need to speak to anyone unless you choose to say, try Mythic Plus or harder difficulties of raiding. But again and also even then you don't really talk to them. Um, I think also the issue is that Classic WoW made people interact with each other. And I yes. think you need to do that. Because most people that play MMOs, I think, are just kind of like, they're, they just kind of want to do their own thing and not talk to anybody or do anything. They just want to play the game by themselves and that's it. You have to find a way to get people like that out of their shell. And I remember like my- Dude, that doesn't work. I, I, again, I had a, I had a pretty good social guild in the classic. And yet what, what happened? Out of 40 people, the same fucking 40 people, month after month after month that came, maybe 10 people spoke in total. Only us 10 people were talking about in the comms. And it wasn't like such a situation, okay, okay, now everyone shut up because this pull is hard. No, okay, okay, sometimes someone said that, and but usually it was, ah, fuck, you know, all, all of that good jazz. So... People join guilds, but they're too. You can't. You can't really call them antisocial just for that. But they they don't want. They don't try to talk to people. You know stuff like that. It's kind of insane. It's they're afraid. Are they afraid? Are they are they shy? It's really hard to tell. But yeah, in a, in a game that should so uh, classic in a game where it's so it should be very social. People don't want to be social. Even though they go, they go into guilds and whatnot and things like that. Mom, who is like the, one of the most antisocial people I've ever known, she made friends in Vanilla WoW, and she never made any friends after Wrath of the Lich King. And she played the game up until uh, BFA. Like, she quit, so... So she got Pathfinder to get flying in War Awards Draenor, then they took it away from her in Legion, and she was like, all right. I'll get it again for a legion. It is one of this. BFA rolls around. They took away Pathfinder again. Uh, we don't get fooled again. Yeah, I'm not going to get this shit back again. I'm done. And that was it. Yeah, enough of that shit. And why would you bother to go that far as a new player if you can experience every instance the yeah. game has to offer through LFD or LFR? And she had tons of like stories of like her guild and like drama that would happen in her guild. And it was just like the typical WoW guild drama where it's like the wife of like the main tank is like a moonkin that doesn't use <laughs> moonkin form. <laughs> and it's just like all this really stupid stuff. But you'll rem you remember, like I remember one time, for example, <laughs> I woke up for school, and this is like, uh, like I was in 11th grade, so it was Vanilla WoW, and she had just gotten up, and, you know, as always, she had fucking, like, uh, you know, morning tea, smoking a fucking cigarette, and, you know, got some toast, and she's all excited, she's like, get ready to go, I'm like, yeah, and I'm like, I'm like, what are you doing, she's like, I'm getting ready to do Dire Mall, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's exciting, you're gonna do everything, she's like, yeah, we're doing a full run, and Dire I'm like, all mall. right, have fun. And I didn't really think anything of it. So I went to school. I came back from school. Eight hours later. Come back and I'm like, hey. She's like, hey. I'm like, how's Dire Mall? She's like, it's she's like, it's going. And I'm like, alright, good luck. It's going. And she's like, yep. Bruh. And I look there and like everybody's just standing around doing nothing, right? Then uh I come out a little bit later on and uh I'm like, so, uh, what, what's for dinner? What do you think about for dinner? She's like, I don't, I don't know. Like, just get, look, get whatever you want. I don't really care. Uh, just figure something out. Like, I, I don't know. I'm like, I, I'm still here. I'm doing a dungeon. And it, it, it like, at this point, dungeon. it's been like fucking like 11 hours in Dire Mall. And I look at her. And Ow! Everybody is dead. And it's the ramp up. I still remember this. It's the ramp up to the final tribute room for Dire Mall North. And she's just had enough. 
And I remember after that dungeon, she said, I will never do Dire Maul again in my life. She never did. How do you fucking fail that shit? She didn't even go back for Transmog. She didn't go back for, like, level 70. She never went back. Good for her. That's right. It was an 11, probably could have been a 13-hour Dire Maul run. And I still fucking remember How? That. Like, what story do I have that I remember from BFA? A call-out's incoming. That was really funny. Mail Muncher? Yeah, but that, that's like a stream meme. Whereas, like, the call-out's incoming was like an emergent thing that happened because of player interactions. Salt would continue to flow until it piled up in dunes like the fucking Sahara Desert. Ooh. It's simple, really. Blizzard succeeded in their goal of solving well, as I put it. They cut out. Well, they made a they made WoW appeal to people that don't like MMOs. I'm consuming tedious elements. They streamlined the game. They increased their focus on end game content and made this easier to pick up and play. They made the game quicker and much. Dude, if I would be so fucking mad at this guy. Fucking turns off his UI. He gets in front of the boss and starts attack. I, I would be so fucking mad. More efficient, and in doing so. They lost its magic. How do you it know he turns up yeah, his AI? In return for what was thought to be a better user experience, they traded a lot of its depth, its immersion, and its ability to grip a player from level one and not let go. The yeah. unparalleled historic- Yeah, I hate this thing that like people are like, oh, the game gets good at a certain time. Dude, I was having fun playing Vanilla WoW in like the first zone. It was immediately fun for me achievement of vanilla Two. wow was that Blizzard yeah the game starts at level one experience. bro no star field it gets good after 50 hours trust me bro not max level nice the ordinary feeling of playing a video game they may and also that's what makes it so casual it, because like let's say you're level 37 you know what you have to do get level 38 so like if most people never hit level 60 problem solved you don't need to what? add end game content because people never get there. Need the world of Warcraft, a world vast and seamless, rich in lore that wasn't thrust in your face mm -hmm. or course corrected at every turn. Yeah. They made a place worthy of a true adventure. And then I mean, the reason they didn't course correct is because they were too inept and didn't know what they were doing. That's that's why they didn't course correct. Over the course of many years, and often endorsed by the complaints and requests of players, they proceeded to gamify, for lack of a better word, every aspect of the world that they had so skillfully and lovingly created. Now, as I'm sure you can tell, it is very difficult for me to not let my biases show when it comes to vanilla. I know there is an equal or even greater portion of the World of Warcraft player base who view most, if not all, the changes- <laughs> Yeah, bro. Yeah, you- Look at this. L l look at this right here. L look at the holy fire. Or even greater portion of the World of Warcraft- <laughs> Click! Oh my lord. Warcraft player base who view most, if not all, the changes made after vanilla with a more positive light than I do. Honestly- the there are some things that were good that were added. Like, I think that, for example, adding dual spec is just better. Yeah, I, I like dual spec. I am a dual spec enjoyer. Uh, let's see. Besides but then you that, don't have the what commitment. else did I really like? Mounts not filling up your bag. I like being able to collect mounts. Guild banks. Yep, guild banks. And that's about it. There are times when I agree with this, and there are many aspects Barber? of Modern WoW which... All right. Hot take. I don't think they should have allow ever allowed you to change your character's appearance. How many of you guys remember seeing people and you could recognize the face and the hair of the character and you knew who it was? No. I'm serious. No, I'm serious. I I'm actually serious. I don't think they should have ever allowed you to change your character's appearance. No. Nope. I know, it's stupid. It's really stupid, but I, I think... Uh, like, I, I do, I think so. Which I miss as a classic I, I know. player. I know. Such as the more competitive, fast-paced raids and dungeons, which I took so much joy in for many, many years. The game, okay, in fine. many it's ways, fine. isn't so much better or worse, depending on which version you play. It's often just different. But like I said at the start of this video, most people don't have time to split equally between the different versions of WoW. And that means that the choice about what you prefer your game to be does need to be made on some mm -hmm. level. The life and history of World of Warcraft often feels to me a little bit like a train journey. 
Each expansion is a different Train stop, journey. and players choose which stop to get off at depending on their own preferences and what they would like to see. Some people are content to ride that train all the way till its final destination, wherever that might be, but some of us were happiest right back at the start. What I'm trying to say here is that everyone has their own idea of when WoW was at its best, when the blend of modernization and old school immersion was at its finest. Vanilla WoW. That's whenever the game was the best. Everything Probably. after that was worse. TBC took a world this big, and it made it this big. For yep. some, it's Wrath or TBC. TBC had so many problems. Admittedly, I liked the leveling in TBC. I didn't think it was that bad, honestly. But, you know, still, TBC had so many problems. The biggest one being... Uh, I really think TBC could have been ten times better if all they did was just remove the attunements. The attunements sucked so much. I stopped playing because of attuning. I, I can't. Sp you need to spend 5 8 to 8 hours to get uh, to get a tank for for the dungeon because even in your guild no tank wants to tank because the game it, because I don't even know why. Dude, it sucked. Brothers, it's mop or even legion. But for me and many other mm -hmm. players, World of Warcraft's design philosophy, the intentions of its developers were never better than in vanilla. Yep, in the original is. world that they True. designed for us True. to explore and adventure through. And now, almost nostalgia? 20 years 0%. later, that remains the case, and it's why to this day, despite its age, despite its inconveniences, and regardless of the lack of new content for it, so many of us look to Vanilla Era WoW right. with fondness, That's right. and we're always ready Absolutely. to jump back in. Yep. And I want to talk about ice cream. This hey, is a good time. Everyone ice likes cream ice cream. is great. I was here, by the way. This ice is my cream first is ever Boys Con. favorite desserts. Personally, I love chocolate, and I love cookies and cream. Cookies and cream is actually my all-time favorite dessert. I got cookies and cream ice cream downstairs. I should get some after this stream. But I stand, understand that for some of you, that your guy, favorite do you hear flavor him? is vanilla. Wow. Dude, this was nuts. Hey this everyone, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Whenever maybe it you even agreed with me on this. Who knows? When playing yeah. old school WoW, I often find myself thinking about what makes. Dude, Classic Plus is coming sooner or later. You know it. I know it. Just, just, just wait for it. They, they're gonna collapse. They're gonna do it. Anyway, this was Quizzer Sensei. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already, and have a nice day. Bye bye.